Kamala Harris gave yet another interview that was filled with nothing but intellectual junk food. A 40-foot-tall statue, a naked statue showing Trump hanging, was revealed in Las Vegas right outside of a Kamala Harris campaign event, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are nowhere to be found in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. We'll get to all of that and much more, but first we turn to CNN, where Harry Enten revealed horrific polling data for Kamala Harris among union voters that just jump off off the screen should set off sirens all right this is union households this is democratic margin in presidential election it ain't what it used to be you know you go back to 1992 bill clinton won that union vote by 30 points hillary clinton only won it by 12 points back in 2016 that was the lowest mark for a democrat since 1984 mondale versus reagan but look at where kamala harris is today she's only leading by nine points that would be the worst democratic performance in a generation 10 points off the mark of joe biden who of course won four years ago who was sort of that union guy union joe right won it by 19 points she's 10 points off his mark and the worst in a generation if this in fact holds sarah not only is that the worst in a generation i just don't understand how these polls show kamala harris and donald trump neck and neck you know you take a look at the subsectors the uh, different demographics, whether it's union voters, whether it's minorities, black men specifically. I mean, you can go down the list and all of these groups are trending towards Trump and yet the top line numbers show a tight race. It just doesn't make sense. Well, the one area where Kamala Harris has a clear lead is white women, especially white liberal women. Well, here is my question for the white women in the suburbs that the media likes to talk about. You know, the white women in the suburbs are, you know, supposedly turned off by Trump's rhetoric. They say he's too brash. Well, what about this? A naked 40-foot statue of Trump hanging was unveiled in Las Vegas. Not only is this in Las Vegas, it was right outside of a Kamala Harris campaign rally. And apparently now this statue, hanging statue, has been taken down and is actually going to be touring the swing states. It's going to be going to Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania. So my question is, for all those white suburban women who, you know, flocked towards Joe Biden in 2020, who are considering voting for Kamala Harris because of abortion or because they just don't like Trump's tone, I mean, do you endorse this? I mean, the fact that here's another angle of it. Um, you can see here uh, it, it's hanging up, uh, just absolutely obscene. And, you know, this is, I, I think that's a slap in the face to Trump. Not only is this, is it a slap in the face to Trump? But my my rule always is put the shoe on the other foot. If Republicans did that to Kamala Harris, if there was a naked statue of her that tall hanging, hanging, okay, do you think Democrats would be okay with that? Do you think the media would be okay with that? Do you think swing voters and swing states would be okay with that? Yet there's been no denunciation of this from the Harris camp. And it was right outside her rally. And now this is going to the swing states, apparently following uh, Kamala Harris's tour bus. Now, to be clear, this was an independent artist, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are funds and dark money going to this artist. Here is the local news reporting on it. It has been car after car with people trying to get a look of the art installation of former President Trump themselves. Well, News 3 was contacted by a spokesperson for the artist who wants to remain anonymous, but did share some insight. Now they tell us that the piece is titled Crooked and Obscene. It is 43 feet tall, 10 feet wide marionette, weighs 6,000 pounds. It is made out of foam over rebar. The artist spokesperson tells me the purpose is to ignite conversations. And But again, if someone on the right did that and said, you know, my naked statue of Kamala Harris, which is deformed if it was deformed like the one of Trump, uh, is to ignite conversation. I think we all know that that person would be canceled. I think we all know that that statue would be vandalized, burned down, whatever. Yet, for whatever reason, after two assassination attempts, the left can do this to Trump and get away with it. Now, just to confirm, this installation is apparently being taken down and going to all the swing states. 
and the marionette won't be here too long. It's actually slated to come down tomorrow and it's gonna hit the road now. The spokesperson tells me that it is headed through the key swing states ahead of our presidential election. Reporting from North of Las Vegas. Okay, Amber. so not only did we have CNN's Harry Enten telling us that Kamala Harris is doing the worst in a generation among union voters, but now we have this obscene, vile statue going to the swing states. I, I wonder, is that going to have an impact on suburban women? You know, is that going to be another demographic that gets turned off by this sort of campaigning, this sort of rhetoric? You know, the artist claims that they want to spark a conversation, yet um, they're going to the swing states. It sounds like you have an agenda to me. Well, that wasn't all that was in Harry Enten's report. Apparently, trade school graduates are also flocking towards Trump. And Harry made a clear point that, you know, a lot of people tend to conflate the unions with people who work with their hands or work a trade. And those are actually two very different demographics. Talk to me about manual labor, those folks who went to trade schools. Yeah, those folks who use their hands. I think a lot of people oftentimes conflate the union vote with those who use their hands. Mike Rowe, of course, has been arguing more people should go to trade schools, more people should get a vocational degree. Look at this margin. This wow. to me, oh boy, does this tell you about the state of our politics now versus back in the early 1990s. Margin among vocational and trade school grads in pre-election polling. Bill Clinton was leading that vote over George H.W. Bush by seven points. Look at where Donald Trump is today over Kamala Harris, a 31-point advantage. When I think people think of the working class, they think of people who use their hands. And we know that Donald Trump has been going after that vote, and he is in a very, very strong position, more so perhaps than any other bloc, the folks who go to trade school, vocational school. That has moved from being a core Democratic group to now being a core group of Donald Trump's massive amount of support among And the world. based on the comments I see just on my own videos, I, I feel like it proves the point that Enten is talking about. I know a lot of you work a trade. Uh, one of you has been a longtime watcher of the channel, and I know that um, you recently got laid off, but you, you know, worked... Uh, I think, uh, tool casting, uh, dying or something like that. And then uh, a few of you are truckers. You know, I, I, I know that that's a big cohort, truckers for Trump. Well, in addition to, okay, so this whole video is about different demographics, right? So first we have the union workers. Now we have uh, trade school, vocational school. Uh, I showed the Trump statue because I think that that's going to turn off suburban women. Well, now we have a whole new demographic because of the hurricane, Hurricane Halim, that has ravaged the Southeast. Um, Trump is actually there today. He not only, you know, gave a speech, speech, but he actually dropped off supplies. He met with victims. He went to the emergency center to greet first responders and to encourage them. And he was actually asked about where's Joe Biden. And I thought this was a funny comeback by Trump. And have you reached out to President Biden about federal relief efforts? No, I haven't reached out to him. No, we, uh, I think he's sleeping right now, actually. Yeah, and I think that's true. Joe Biden was at the beach this weekend. Kamala Harris was apparently in Los Angeles, you know, having a party with celebrities and elites because, you know, she really cares about the working class. So I think that the states mostly affected, North Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, realistically are going to be going for Trump. You know, Trump can probably peel off a few votes in Georgia. You know, he was in Valdosta, Georgia today. But I think the message being sent here is that, you know, Trump is going to visit these small towns that have been ravaged, right? And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are nowhere to be found. Well, even though that's happening in the South, and even though that's happening in red states, what does that do? That sends a message to people also in small towns in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, in Ohio, in Wisconsin, in Minnesota, in Virginia, by focusing on not only small towns, but a hurricane disaster area where Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are nowhere to be found, that really is sending a strong message that Trump will be there for us when something goes bad. This is Trump actually meeting the people you see on the screen. Um, they actually owned a furniture store, and you can see the camera's about to pan, and the furniture store was just completely destroyed in the storm, and Trump is there to offer a word of encouragement. Before that, he actually went to the emergency response center. So you see uh, local authorities are here. FEMA is here. The, uh, the Army is there, National Guard. This is basically their command center, and he's meeting with everyone.
I mean, where's Joe Biden in all of this? Why isn't Joe Biden going down to meet with first responders to encourage people to get a sense of what's going on to provide, you know, federal relief? You know, I, it this hurricane, Hurricane Helene, just take a look at this footage. I mean, absolutely devastating. I think if this had happened in New Orleans, if this had happened anywhere else, I think we'd be getting a lot more media coverage on it. But for whatever reason, it seems like the hurricane happened and no one seems to care in the mainstream media. And I think that's really frustrating. Is it because it's just a red state or red states that have been impacted? I, I don't know, but for whatever reason, the media isn't focusing on it, or maybe they don't want to draw attention to the inaction of Joe Biden, the absence of Kamala Harris. Uh, Donald Trump actually had even more to say on that. The governor's doing a very good job. He's having a hard time getting the president on the phone. I guess uh, they're, not, they're not being responsive. The federal government is not being responsive, but they're having a very hard time getting the uh, getting the president on the phone. He won't get on, and of course, the vice president out someplace campaigning, uh, looking for money. So they got to be, they have to be focused over here. It's too big. This is a really bad one. And uh, the governor's doing a good job, but he's having a hard time getting the president on the phone. So there has been a lot made about this, about the governor not being able to get in touch with Joe Biden. Well, Joe Biden struck back and said that he was on the phone. But if you will listen to Joe Biden's words closely, he doesn't say that he was on the phone with Governor Kemp. He just says he was on the phone and he doesn't say who he was on the phone with. Trying to retaliate. And the hurricane, Mr. President, why weren't you and Vice President Harris here in Washington commanding this this weekend? I was commanding. I was on the phone for at least two hours yesterday and the day before as well. I command. It's called a telephone. Is it, all my security people. Is it not important for the country to see? He walks out, doesn't turn back. Meanwhile, <laughs> Trump is meeting with the victim. So this is after he had uh, dropped off supplies. He went to meet with victims of the hurricane. And you can see here a very warm, receptive crowd. So... Again, tying this back to the main theme of the video, there are a lot of cohorts, a lot of demographics that are peeling away from Democrat, Democrats. And I think that, you know, this hurricane is really going to speak to, you know, people in flyover country all across the nation, not just in these red states, potentially in swing states. And I think it could even turn these red states even redder to help Trump in the popular vote. Last but not least, Harry Enten confirmed that Kamala Harris is struggling with voters of color. You know, we have been noting on this program, right, that Donald Trump seems to have been having some real impact among voters of color, getting into that traditional Democratic support. And I was very interested to see this because we're talking about the working class, right? So this is the margin among non-college graduates, all right, the voters of color. You go back four years ago, look at that. Joe Biden won that group by 45 points. Look at where Kamala Harris's support is today. She's still leading amongst that group, but that lead is down 17 points to just 28 points. And I will note that the margin among voters of color who actually graduated graduate college has only been changed by five points, five points compared to four years ago. The reason Donald Trump is... And specifically, if you look at black men, black men under 50, it's about one in four now. It was one in five, but now one in four say they're voting for Trump. That is a huge improvement for Trump. That is, you know, a water high mark for any Republican uh, in modern political history. So Kamala Harris has been doing more interviews. And you know, she's now asking for a second debate, and I think you only do that when you're in a losing position. It, usually the one calling for a rematch is the person who loses. But I think people are seeing through her shtick. So take a look at this answer. One of my guilty pleasures, especially when I'm on the road, are my Doritos. Oh, what flavor? Nacho. Nacho. Old school, original. original. OG, Come on. Yeah. OG, Come on. Red bag. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Red bag. That's exactly Gotta have a napkin yeah. nearby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, maybe her favorite snack is Doritos. Who knows? It, it just kind of feels like pandering. I almost half expected her to bring out hot sauce like Hillary Clinton did. Uh, it, I think my issue with that more so than the pandering, though, is the fact that she hasn't given any hard-hitting, substantive interviews, and yet she's still talking about non-issues, people things people don't care about. No one cares about what your favorite snack is. People want to know what you're going to do about the economy. And, well, her answers on that aren't any better. 
from a show to a whole entire company. What is your kind of your economic That's plan wonderful. moving forward for people who are living paycheck to paycheck yeah. and, and struggling for groceries and, and, and rent and, and homeowners? So look, I grew up, so my, my sister and I were raised by our mother. We lived for a long time on, in an apartment on top of a, a child care center. That child care center was actually owned by a woman who lived two doors down from us, Mrs. Shelton, who was... Okay, you get the idea. You can tell her campaign's team said, don't talk about how you're, you were born in a middle-class family. So she is essentially saying, I was, I'm, I was from a middle-class family without using the words middle-class. And, you know, she just talks about herself rather than talking about her plan. And... Um, so we shouldn't be surprised. This is the last segment or last clip I'm going to show from that interview that just you have to see it to believe it. Look, from the time that the president called me and told me he wasn't running, mm -hmm. I mean, it just like everything was in speedy, speedy motion. And I was not sleeping so well. And that one morning, I just I, I mean, I had, I don't know, a few hours sleep and I, you know, I like to sleep. Mm -hmm. I just got up, I was like, and so I just went out and got a pork roast and started marinating. <laughs> See, time to work. Get to your happy place. And my family happened to be in town, so they mm -hmm. were very happy about mm -hmm. the whole situation. Mm -hmm. But I just got up and started, everybody's asleep, I just got up and started cooking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they should ask her about her recipe. I wonder, you know, if she Googled that one too, uh, or if she marinated it in the bathtub with her collard greens. I don't know. As always, all of this is my commentary and my analysis. That's what's going on from my point of view, and I'd love to hear from y'all. All y'all folks, guys and gals, <laughs> thank you for your feedback in the last video. But, you know, Harry Enten kicked us off saying that Kamala Harris is the worst Democrat in a generation polling among union workers. And then we just go down the list of demographics from suburban women to trade school to uh, the folks in Appalachia and the South who have been ignored, uh, uh, minorities. I mean, it's just not looking good for her. When we take a look at the details of this poll, these polls, and somehow we're supposed to believe overall the race is neck and neck, something's not adding up. I don't know. But uh, what do you guys think? Let me know down below. If you haven't already, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. I know it's a simple thing to ask, but it really does help me in the algorithm to reach more viewers like you. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and to check out one of these videos.